I'm back. Roll the intro. Welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, my name is Chris. I'm an amateur pilot who's aspiring to become a professional pilot. And the reason that I created this channel was because I wanted to share my experiences as an ordinary middle-aged guy trying to do extraordinary things. Um, this video was a long time in the making. Uh, several months ago, I had the opportunity to work in Europe, uh, in Germany, um, for about four months. And while I was there, I did some exploring and I figured out a way that I, as an FAA private pilot's license holder, could actually exercise my privileges there in Europe and uh, rented a plane and flew to Denmark and back. So I'm gonna outline some of that plus some of the other things that I saw. So anyways, enough of me talking, let's just get into it. My quarantine is over, and tomorrow I will be moving to Berlin on the Kudam in my new apartment, which I'm really excited about. But before then, I wanted to get one last look at Potsdam and see if I could find anything interesting to photograph and share with you. The graffiti situation here is pretty out of hand. Came down here to take a look at this like baby castle. Turns out it's some dude's house. He's in the back watering the plants. This castle is right next to that castle. I guess this is like the 13th century version of a planned community. I'll bet the HOA dues are insane. It's finally Moving day. Good morning. Let's take a little tour of my new home for the next four months. I am not complaining. Cheers. Yeah, I got my car too. So I have this cool little um, Opal Corsa and um, perfect for spending a Saturday cruising around the countryside looking for little airports. My hope is that over the course of the next few weeks while I'm driving around Germany exploring little aerodromes that uh, I'll find an aero club that is charmed by my terrible German and sexy American accent. Today was a lot of fun. I got to visit three airports in the Berlin area, two grass strips, and this last one here that's sort of a hub for skydiving. And they also have uh, two or three flight schools on the field. So. Um, I definitely visited some places today that um, I could potentially do some flying out of. I did a little bit more research on airports in the area and changed my search a little bit and I found an airport east of Berlin. Uh, Aero Tours is the name of the company and they rent a uh, little Diamond DA-20s for a very reasonable price and it's a plane I've always wanted to fly. So. I'm um, not going to go flying today, but I'm going to go out there and check them out and I'll tell you what I find out. So it turns out that Flugplatz Strasbourg um, is a really nice airport with um, two or three uh, good schools on the field with really reasonable rates for chartering or renting planes. Also, I had a really good burger at the Doppeldecker Grill, named after 
that plane, I think, because they don't have a double-decker burger on the menu, but the burger that I did have was incredible. And that's saying a lot, because before today, I thought that our two countries just had a fundamental misunderstanding on what a good burger is. Um, I've been proven wrong. This place was great. So I'll be coming back here probably next weekend um, to see about scheduling a little bit of time flying. Came back for another visit to the airport at Strasbourg, uh, Flugplatz Strasbourg, um, with the folks at Aero Tours to see if I would be able to rent an airplane and fly around. And actually, I can, and I'm pretty excited. So this is a really cool airport. I've got some paperwork to do with the local German aviation authority to get a holiday license, uh, do a checkout flight with these guys, and go have some fun. Stay tuned. Guess what I'm doing today? Bam! I'm here at, um, this is Flugplatz Strasbourg, and I'm flying that little plane today. Uh, that thing. Uh, this is a Katana, a DA-20 100 horsepower little two-seat aircraft. Uh, and I'm doing a third flight with an instructor here today to get signed off so that they'll let me rent from them. So. Uh, I had two very short flights because of scheduling issues and today we'll go out and do some emergency procedures and get a little bit more familiar with how radio communications for VFR navigation work here in Deutschland. Okay, so here's a little post game. I just flew this little airplane for an hour and a half all over Berlin, landing at two different airports and doing low approaches at uh, Tegel and Schunenfeld which are the two major airports that serve, um, that serve Berlin. So it's actually really fun. So I'm back, it was fun. I've gotten a sign off from my instructor. He's over there getting ready for another lesson. I got a sign off from him that I'm cleared to rent or charter as they say, and uh, plan a fun long cross country. So see you on the other side. Strasburg Info, Diamond DA Echo, Papa Papa Oscar, ready for departure. Runway 05. Oh, windshake, what I'm gonna do too lots. Uh, copy, gonna uh, back taxi on 05 for full length departure and uh, right crosswind departure. Airspeed's alive. 40, 45, 50, rotate smoothly. For 70 on the climb. It's where the people came to play. Don't let them transform you. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, hey, hey. Come and see what you've been missing. On a little slice of heaven. It's the only place we're living. We're living. It's that place. Off, laying a taxi light off, flaps up. Absolutely perfect day for flying. Just pop off for a good day. Your flight plan is active. Flight plan is active. Uh, Delta Papa off for a good day. Long and info uh, Katana Delta Echo Papa Papa off for. Yeah, Echo Papa Papa off for. Uh, Delta Papa, uh, Papa Oscar, we're off to Strasbourg to request uh, flight information. We have an open flight plan. Delta Papa Papa Oscar, take him departure destination. Uh, destination Roskilde, uh, Echo Kilo, Roma Kilo. Hold on. Clock 7741, QNH 1018. 7741 Delta Papa Oscar. Welcome. Uh, let me explain what's going on here. I am flying a Diamond uh, DA-20 Katana, a little two-seat single-engine uh, airplane with an 80-horsepower engine. And I departed Strasbourg. Zulu, 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 guys. Zulu, Zulu, Okay, as I was saying, um, I just departed uh, Strasbourg 
airport about um, 25 minutes ago. It's a small airport. Delta Papa Papa Oscar. Delta Papa Oscar. Your transponder switched on, 7741. Don't have you on my radar screen right now. Uh, 7741, Delta Papa Oscar. Roger. Okay, really busy on the frequency today. So I'm here at about 4,500 feet, and I'm heading to Denmark, Copenhagen. The airport is called uh, Roskilden. Um, <laughs> it's not required equipment for... Oh my Would God. the frequency quieted down a little bit, so I'll try this again. I departed Strasbourg Airport, uh, which is a little general aviation airport about an hour drive east of Berlin. Um, and now I'm flying north to Copenhagen, Denmark, a little uh, airport uh, that serves the area, general aviation airport called Roskilde, and I think it's about a a 30 minute ride into town afterwards. So I booked a room for tonight. I should be landing in Roskilde uh, by about 11.30, uh, get to the hotel and um, spend the evening. And then tomorrow morning, I've got to head out um, kind of early so I can have the airplane back in uh, Strasbourg by noon for a student pilot who's uh, got some time building to do. So, and that's kind of what I'm doing out here. A little bit of time building. Um, a beautiful VFR day. There's a high overcast. It's about 6,500 feet. It's about 2,000 feet above me. Um, and you can't see it because the way I have the camera situated, but the Baltic Sea is right off my left wing there, probably about 15 miles. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of cool. You might be wondering how an American pilot with an FAA private pilot's license can come to Germany and fly an airplane with a Delta registration number, a German registered aircraft. I'm gonna do a separate video outlining that process because it is a bit detailed, but the short version is uh, in Europe, uh, at least in Germany, through the LBA, the local aviation authority, the German aviation authority, you can get what's called a holiday license, which allows you once per year um, permission for a period of 28 days, 28 consecutive days to exercise your privileges as a private pilot. Um, and, but it's very German. So uh, going through the process, it, you pay a fee. I want to say it's about 150 euro, $185 US. Um, have an application to fill out. You have to um, verify that you have done a um, a checkout flight with a local uh, flight instructor. You have to provide the tail number of the aircraft or aircraft that you're going to be flying. So you can only fly those uh, specific airplanes. In my case, I picked the tail numbers of all four of these Diamond DA-20s that Aero Tours has um, available for rental or charter, as they call here. Um, obviously a copy of your medical certificate, your passport, your um, your uh, FAA license, etc. Yeah, it's a pretty involved process, uh, totally worth it. If I were to come back here and spend a significant amount of time, I would probably go ahead and do a full um, EASA PPL conversion, but uh, it wouldn't make any sense for the length of time that I'm here. Um, because I think that by the time it's all said and done, it involves check rides and training. And you'd be out about 4,000 euro by the time it's done. So it's almost like getting your private pilot's license all over again from a financial standpoint. I think I need to get some pictures. There's some really cool little towns down here. One, two, three, five, two, five, two. Three, five, two, five, help. If you're watching on this camera, you'll notice that the Aspen Evolution is not functioning and it's not uh, required equipment for day VFR. Um, I have a natural horizon. Es 
In a moment, we're going to make a slight right-hand turn and heading directly over the Baltic Sea. It'll be a short 15-minute leg. If you can see it, over my left shoulder is uh, the beach of the port city of Vostok. Uh, I have visited, it's a really cool place. I'll be crossing the shoreline here in about a minute. I've got about 50, five zero minutes left in the flight. Engine instruments are good. We're making a straight line. We're 4,500 feet. Um, I would have preferred to go up to 6,500, but we do have a broken uh, overclass, overcast layer that we would be right in the middle of, so we have to stay here. I am keeping an eye on the glide advisor, and um, I don't think that we're going to have an issue um, with the distance. Yeah, we should always, we'll always be, this uh, This little airplane has an uh, incredible glide ratio of 14 to 1. Um, I think a Cessna 172 is 9 to 1. Uh, so, it's all good. It's been pretty hazy and overcast, but it does look like this overcast wants to break off, which would be great um, for our arrival into Roskilde. Um, I'm not sure of the pronunciation on that. If I was saying it, if it was German, Oskilte? I don't know. So we should be hitting a frequency change here pretty soon. Delta Echo Papa Papa Oscar. Delta Echo Papa Papa Oscar. You make contact already, Copenhagen 127075, score BFR. Contact Copenhagen 127075, squawk BFR, Delta Echo Papa Papa Oscar, good day. Copenhagen uh, Diamond Delta Echo Papa Papa Oscar. Delta Echo Papa Papa Oscar information, hello, go ahead. Uh, Delta Echo Papa Papa Oscar, we are about 10 miles northeast of Vostok, um, en route to Echo Kilo Romo, Romeo Kilo. Delta Papa Oscar, information Roger, just clock 5414. 5414, Delta Papa Oscar. So now I'm speaking to Copenhagen approach, I am I would say about six miles from crossing the border into Denmark. Uh, at least we are with two aircraft. And have a different oh, yeah. uh, accent to, to adjust to. The sun's trying to break out um, and clear off some of this overcast, which is now scattered and looks to be about uh, 6,500. There's a power off information you identified. Confirm flight double four five. Uh, say again for Papa Oscar. Radar contact. Confirm flight level 45. Flight level 45, Papa Oscar. In about 60 seconds, we'll be in Denmark, and the glide advisor tells me that we've successfully uh, crossed the channel without ever being uh, in reach of land.
Well, made it. 